Hello, my health freedom loving friends and liberty loving patriots. Misty Carl Phelps here with Health Freedom Idaho. I am just setting up the camera. The uh, press conference has been delayed until 2.15. Thank you, Lord, because I was running late, as you saw in my last live stream. Actually, okay, now that I have a minute and I'm not panicking, I will go ahead and change the settings on my Facebook while we're waiting. So bear with me. You all can gather in. We'll, we're going to have the press conference soon. I'm hoping to give some good word to the ears that will hear. I'm going to make this public. Bear with me. Okay, that is good to go. Okay, and we should be back on. Good deal. We're back on. Destinations have errors. I don't know what that's about. It says some of my destinations have errors. It looks like we've got people watching and I've got a thumbs up, so we'll say hopefully it's okay. Um, okay, so I'm here at St. Luke's. I'll show you how many people showed up. Let's see, turn this camera around. It really gets glitchy, StreamYard does. It really gets glitchy. Okay. So forgive me on that. Hey, we want to let everybody know that if you don't have a sign, there are signs right up here you can grab. So if you have a sign, please feel free to come on right up here, grab a sign, hold it up and wave. Hi, friend. Ready to speak? I'm ready. Am I good? first? Sir? No. Okay, oh, God. Uh, Ron Nate's gonna be first. Okay, good. And I'm gonna read a statement from uh, Judy Boyle. Awesome. And then we're gonna have you. Okay. And me. Okay, Sarah's coming up there with me. She's gonna read the law. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Hey. Oh, where's the mic? What's that? Where's my dinner? Um, he is at his new office. Oh, good. But he knows we're gonna need him tomorrow. Okay. Yes. Why can't I get this? All right, hang on. Hang on with me, peeps. Well, back at looking at me. Sorry, it does say it's got some errors, so I don't know if that's affecting things or not. Okay, I'm going to turn this camera around. We're about to get started here. Okay, well, can't see. Oh, dang it. Okay, okay. Ah. Bear with me, friends. It's not letting me click anything. I hope y'all are watching. I can't even see the comments. My fingers might be too cold to uh, affect the, the buttons. Okay, let's see if we're going to be able to see. Perfect. Look at that. Stop messing with it. Thank you, everybody, for being here. 
We appreciate you guys coming out to support Bears. We want to open up this press conference with a prayer and the blowing of the shofar. So let's all pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness to our, to our family and for all that you're doing right now. We pray that your perfect will will be done in this situation with my grandson, baby Cyrus. We thank you, Lord, for all the people who've come to support him. We pray a special blessing upon them, a hedge of protection around everybody that's here. And most of all, Lord, we pray for a reunification of baby Cyrus with my daughter, with my son-in-law, Levi and Marissa, and we pray that you would protect him at all costs, Lord. We trust in you, we believe in you, and we trust that you will have your will and your way. In Jesus' name, we, th we thank you, and in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> We are all meeting under different circumstances, but I thank you that you guys are here. My name is Diego Rodriguez, and I'm the grandfather of Cyrus Anderson, who's the son of Levi and Marissa. For now, I'm going to be acting as the spokesperson for the family. And again, I first want to let everybody know on behalf of Levi, Marissa, and the entire family, we just want to say thank you so much to everybody for being here and for your support. We especially want to give thanks to Several of the people who will be here speaking today were very honored and privileged to have Representative Ron Nate. He's one of the very best legislators we have here in this state, and we'd like to have him come on up and make a statement as well. Please, everybody, welcome Representative Ron Nate. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for being here. Uh, I can't help but think that we shouldn't have to be here today. That uh, this, it, it's a sad commentary on where we are as a state and uh, the state of our politics. Um, what I've seen in video uh, is chilling to me. I, I can't imagine we're at the point where we have uniformed officers ready to take a baby out of a mother's arms when they know that mother has promised that they would not be separated from their baby. Um, I mean, I know why we're all here. I don't need to say much. I know the facts will come out on this, but it's a reminder to me that I think we need to relook at what goes on with Child Protective Services. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Whenever somebody comes to your home or to you personally to mess with your family, to interview your family, to collect evidence, they need to tell you your rights before they do anything. People do have rights and they need to know what they can and cannot do and what, what rights they reserve for themselves. Mo good mothers should never have to fear their government, but government should always have to fear good parents. And let's get this done. Let's, let's work on getting baby Cyrus back with Marissa and Levi uh, and back with the good grandparents that, that the baby enjoys. And and uh, thank you again for coming out. I don't have much to say, but I'm here. I'm fully supportive. I'm going to do everything I can to hold health and welfare accountable, child and protective services accountable, the police departments accountable, so that we can make sure that the law works well and that families, first and foremost, are protected from intrusion from their governments. Thank you. Thank you so much, Representative Nate. It means the world to us that you're here. I'm not normally an emotional guy, those of you guys who know me. So forgive me. I also have a statement here from Representative Judy Boyle, who unfortunately was not able to come down, but she did want to send her support, and she sent me a statement she wanted me to read. So this is from Representative Judy Boyle. She says she's known... Our family since Marissa was a little girl. They're an incredibly loving family with each other and their very large circle of friends. Baby Cyrus has been a much wanted and joyful addition. Regardless if a doctor overreacted concerning a missed appointment, the tearing of a baby from his mother's arms is unacceptable to any caring person. 
Marissa is not a danger to her baby. Allowing her to ride with the baby in the ambulance and remaining with him at the hospital, hospital should have been a given by whomever was in charge of this fiasco. Keeping mother and baby apart is completely unacceptable. 40 years ago, my own very ill preemie was at St. Luke's NICU. Even then, the medical community realized it is vital for a baby's recovery to have mom with the baby as much as possible. A baby has heard his mom's voice before they were born and know her touch from birth. An inseparable bond is established, and when that bond is broken, it causes great trauma to both. Traumatized babies take much longer to get well. I have been in contact with both the hospital and the director of health and welfare, where each point to each other as the problem. To whom that shameful behavior really belongs to will eventually be established. Right now, the immediate issue is reuniting Marissa with baby Cyrus. Marissa is a breastfeeding mother. That alone establishes how deeply she cares for Cyrus. It takes an incredible amount of dedication for a mom to attempt and then continue breastfeeding her firstborn child. I urge the, the compassionate medical staff at St. Luke's to allow Marissa to visit baby Cyrus. You will see for yourself the loving person Marissa is with Cyrus. Please do the right thing for the baby's overall well-being. Representative Judy Boyle, District 9. Can we all just agree that if people want to claim to be in the best interest of children, that the best interest of the children is always with their parents? We also have a very special guest, guest that I'd like to, to bring up here. We have Misty Carlfelt, who is with Health Freedom Idaho. Her and Sarah are going to come and speak to you. Let's thank you guys for being here. I wouldn't be anywhere else. Where's Sarah? Oh, there she is. <laughs> so I'm here today to talk about parental rights. Where do our parental rights come from? God. Our parental rights come from God. Our parental rights come from God and are supported by the Constitution and Idaho law. Sarah is going to read to you that very Idaho law that supports our parental rights given to us by God. So first, I just wanted to remind everybody that from our U.S. Constitution, the 14th, the 14th Amendment's uh, Due Process Clause has a component that provides heightened protection against government interference with certain fundamental rights and liberty interests, including parents' fundamental right to make decisions concerning the care, custody, and control of their children. Based on that, we have... Thank you. We have Idaho Code uh, 321010, the Idaho Parental Rights Act, and again, like Misty said, remember, these rights come from God. They're just written down here, but they come from our creator. They don't come from Idaho. It's just that Idaho has written them down for us here. The interests and role of parents in the care, custody, and control of their children are both implicit in the concept of ordered liberty and deeply rooted in our nation's history and tradition. They are also among the unalienable rights retained by the people under the Ninth Amendment to the Constitution of the United States. The interests of the parents include... Sorry. I'm almost done. Not very many people can boss this around. <laughs> the interests of the parents include the high duty and right to nurture and direct their children's destiny, including their upbringing and education. Thank you, Sarah. And I would like to add that it seems to me in this case, and, and the same with so many others where CPS has interjected themselves because of a call from a doctor, that they're putting themselves in between the parents' decision-making and they're seeking of God's guidance. The government is not the authority of how we should parent. Our doctors are not the authority of how we should parent. CPS, hospital staff, they are not the authority of how we should parent. And they have put themselves in that position between us and God as we seek to raise our children. That needs to end now. Amen. We have brought so many bills to the legislature and they haven't been able to get passed. Oftentimes they get stuck in the Senate chairman, chairman's drawer. This is their opportunity. Uh, I believe it was, one of them was actually Cheney. He stopped one, wouldn't allow me to testify on behalf of parents who've had their children ripped away from them by CPS, overlooked my name on the list and did not have me testify because parents are te afraid to testify. Once they've had CPS interfere with their parenting, they're afraid to speak out again 
because they're afraid they're going to show up at their door and take their children again. So they're silenced out of fear. But I'm not afraid to speak out on their behalf. I will speak out on their behalf. But then I get silenced when I go to the Capitol and they don't allow me to testify. This is wrong. We have bills there that need to be heard. Let's give, let's give parents back the rights that they have all along, that the government and the hospitals and the doctors have interfered with. And I, wa I just want to add one thing. If this was really about Cyrus's health, if this was really for his health and well-being, wouldn't his mama be there right now nursing her baby? You all know as well as I do that Marissa would be there day and night feeding her baby, eating, drinking water, and feeding her baby. This is what Cyrus needs. Why is he being denied what he needs in the name of what's good for him? His mama is who God gave him, who is good for him. And that's what he needs is her and her nourishment. Amen. Right. Yeah. Missy couldn't have made that point any better. For everybody who's out there on social media, everybody out there in the news talking about caring for the child and being concerned about the care for the child, you do not care for the care of the welfare of the child if you don't want his mother breastfeeding and nursing him in the same room where he's at. It's that simple. What you're doing is you're defending the system. You're defending the power of the state, which is overreach, and it's wrong. We're here because we care. Who cares more about people, parents and grandparents and family, or a nameless system, a government bureaucracy? How dare you ever imagine a bureaucrat or an entire bureaucratic system cares more about the health and welfare of children than its own family? You're comp you are medically insane if you believe that. You need to be locked. You're the one who needs to be locked up in the loony bin. Now, I'm very, very thankful, additionally, to have another representative, a wonderful representative. But it's amazing to me, those who show up and those who don't, because these are our best legislators that we have here in the state of Idaho. And we're truly blessed to have the good ones that we have. And I want to bring on up here to the press conference, Representative Tammy, are you in the Senate now? No, 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 you're not, no, no, no. <laughs> but maybe one day. Okay, uh, let's bring on up Representative Tammy Nichols. Tammy, thank you so much for being here. And she actually has a personal story that is incredibly relevant to this case. Thank you. Thanks for showing up today. Step away from our show, doesn't speak. Yes, so thanks for being here. We know that, um, we have a broken system that we're dealing with. And we have heard stories from all over the, the nation on issues that have been happening with um, children being taken away from their parents. And it's interesting to me to find out that, you know, we have instances, it seems that we all want children protected, right? That's not the issue here. We want children protected and to be safe and to be in a, in a loving home. The issue is that, that a lot of times it seems that the children that are needing to be protected are the ones that are being ignored and the ones that are are um, doing okay, like the one that we have today, are the ones that they're going after and that's completely backwards. So my situation that I had, my experience is that I had a I had three preemies um, and my, my second preemie, um, after he was about eight months old, he stopped gaining weight, stopped growing, uh, stop doing the things that, you know, they say they normally should do at that, at that age. And uh, my doctor became very concerned and, and they diagnosed him as failure to thrive. And I, I wasn't doing anything different with him than I did with my other kids. I mean, the same type of stuff, you know, nursing and in introducing foods and everything like that to him. But he stopped growing and uh, my, my doctor was concerned. And so they wanted us to start taking him in for weight checks and all that sort of stuff, which I did. Um, but in the back of my head, I always had, boy, you know, if, if they really feel like it, they could turn me in for this. They might think that I'm doing something to my child um, that's causing him issues and I'm not. I'm trying to do everything I can for him. Uh, we were doing Pediasure. I was adding calories to his diet. I mean, just all this sort of stuff. And it just what his body wasn't ready to do that. And um, and so and we were even doing genetics testing. We went that far on it. But I was fortunate that I had a doctor 
that wanted that worked with me and and knew me well and uh and knew that i was trying and that i was not trying to harm my child or anything along those lines because i think if i would have had a doctor that didn't understand that i think we could have taken a different route and it might have gotten really serious and uh, and cps could have been involved in that um but we're we're not in that situation anymore and unfortunately our our healthcare system seems to have changed from a patient doctor relationship to a a doctor uh, dollar sign relationship almost. And I think that that's taken away that personal part of, 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 of our health. You know, we want to have doctors and people that we work with in the, in the medical, um, care facilities that, that want to work with us and are, have our best interest at heart. But unfortunately, um, medicine seems to have taken a different approach and we, we have, a, we have a problem in our healthcare system and we have a problem in our, in our child protective services system. And so, you know, fortunately with my child, he did great. Uh, he's still a tall, skinny kid. He just, I mean, that's just the way he is. And his body was just doing what it needed to do for him at that time. Um, but it was, it was a concern and I was trying to make sure that I did everything possible to show show the my doctor that I was I was trying and I had his best interest at heart and uh, and fortunately like I said I had a doctor that was very understanding and and knew me and knew my family and I think that made a huge difference but no we should not be taking away babies from parents that are are really doing their best and taking care of them and never should a baby be separated from its mother like that um that is the best place for a baby and if and if the number one issue is the care of the child then we shouldn't be taking away its its uh, primary nutritional uh, source that is just uh, wrong in so many ways um you know and there like i said there have been many cases where we have seen negative effects that have happened because of, of good parents losing their children. And, and we know that we have a corrupt system and we need to fix that. And like Representative Ron Nate said, we're going to look into the legislative aspect of it and see what we can do right now to try to start sending a message and, and saying enough is enough. We're not doing this anymore. We're not separating families that should not be separated. So, so thank you. Contact your legislators. Please let them know. Um, make sure that um, that you you tell them, hey, this is wrong and we need to fix this and I and you as my representative need to be looking into this because I know that we have legislators that they probably think that this is okay and that's unfortunate. Um, and uh, you know we, we need to change that narrative and we need to change it now because families shouldn't be ripped apart. We want to keep families together and uh, and not separate them. So thank you again for coming out. We appreciate it and and uh, and send your prayers. Prayers are, are really important at this time. So thank you. Thank you so much, Dan. Support from everybody has been incredible, both from close friends, from family, and, and even strangers has been nothing short of awe-inspiring. I want to tell you that your prayers are felt. As Tammy just said right here, it's very important. And for those who think that's trite and cliche, we believe in that. We believe in God. And I can tell you, as someone who has spent many years praying this is a unique experience because i have never felt the prayers of people like i feel right now in inexplicable ways like you can literally feel a physical covering of prayer covering you and our family and marissa and levi we are here to fight on behalf of baby cyrus now regardless of anyone's personal or political stance no one should reject the idea that parents should be forcefully kept away from their own child, period. Nevertheless, that is what happened to baby Cyrus. And as is to be expected within a short period of time, this happened late after midnight on Friday night. Imagine literally middle of the night under cover of darkness kidnapping of a child on the streets, in a gas station specifically. As is to be expected in this short period of time, the propaganda machine has developed false narratives, mischaracterizations, and flat-out lies regarding the case. They want you to believe that baby Cyrus was somehow in danger or being malnourished. Not only is this completely false, but the truth is that baby Cyrus fell to his worst condition in the so-called care of this very hospital right here. The care that was received at this hospital was absolutely atrocious. And every moment that baby Cyrus is in the care of St. Luke's, without his parents and specifically his mother is dangerous and hazardous to his health. We know for a fact from a report published 
by the industry itself, by John Hopkins University, a medical university, that the third leading cause of death in America is doctors. Over 250,000 plus Americans die every year from doctors. Only cancer and heart disease take more Americans than doctors do. And those are incredibly low numbers. So how can I and how can you be forced by our government to submit to a care that is hazardous to our health? No hospital, doctor, social worker, or police officer has the right to take a child away from parents who are not endangering that child. Now, over the course of the last 24 hours, there are several lies that have emerged that we want to address, and that's why we're having this press conference here today. But before we do, we likewise want to expose this so-called system that has brought us to this place. The system, and I use air quotes, is what we all talk about right? But let's not forget that people are the system. Right. At every step of the way, every time rights were violated, every time a law was broken by doctors, a social worker, or police, it was people who did it, not a faceless system. So we need to start talking about a system because when we do, the people who make up the system get a pass because their names are not spoken and their pictures are not shown. Remember, people are the system. So when you're against the system, you are actually against the people who make up that system. Now let me give you the first example. Friday night when scores of police officers surrounded Levi's truck, they abused, mistreated, and falsely accused and arrested my daughter, Miranda, who is sitting in the front seat. Miranda, come up here really quick so they can see you. This is my daughter, Miranda. And yes, she's a wonderful daughter, and I love her very much. But she is not Cyrus's mom. She's Cyrus's aunt. Marissa is Cyrus's mom, and Miranda is Marissa's sister. I know Marissa, Miranda, easy to get confused. They're both beautiful, long hair. I get it. <laughs> Nevertheless, this is all on film, and we are parsing through the footage now so we can publish it later. But I will tell you now verbatim what the police officer said and what he did. Miranda, who is not Cyrus's mother, but Cyrus's aunt, as I just explained. She's Marissa's sister. She was sitting in the front seat of the truck. A belligerent police officer who will be named as soon as we get clarification, who is evidently a control freak tyrant, and who has undoubtedly, and hear this part loud and clear, undoubtedly abused untold numbers of Idaho citizens, started barking orders at Miranda, yelled at her to get her ASS out of the truck and started pulling her arm through the window. Miranda asked, because she understands her rights, what crime did I commit? As you know, an officer has to tell you why you're being arrested and can't just arrest you for no reason. Oh, yes, they do that, but they can't do that legally. He refused multiple times to answer before yanking Miranda's arm through the window. Miranda told him then, once he starts physically abusing her, that she would comply and to let her get out of the car. She then asked again, what crime did I commit? To which he responded, quote, felony injury to a child, unquote. It's all on film. Now, in case you didn't know, felony injury to a child is a charge typically used when children are beaten and physically harmed, and you can physically see it on the child. Baby Cyrus has only been nurtured and loved while his parents tried to determine, with the aid of many medical professionals, what the cause of his vomiting was. Now, not only was Miranda in no way endangering Cyrus, but Miranda is not Cyrus's mother. So she told the officer, that's not my child. And that is a verbatim quote. This incompetent police officer sardonically repi replied by saying, well, if that's not your child, then you don't need to be going into handcuffs. Miranda replied again by saying, that's not my child, to which the officer replied, now you're going to be arrested for falsifying information to a police officer. <laughs> Only after they saw Marissa in the back seat Holding baby Cyrus, did they realize they made a mistake and then decided 
and then decided to change Miranda's charge to resisting and obstructing, also known as an R&O, which is the, char the charge they use to arrest anybody at any time for any reason. A police officer can walk up to you right now, just arrest you, and you say, hey, what do I do? Ah, R&O, you're arrested for res resisting and obstruction. All you legislators, you're still here. Change that law. Amen. Every single one of you guys, every single human yeah. being is at risk for that stupid rule. It gives police officers, first they have immunity, and it means that they can bully and abuse anybody at any time for any reason and arrest them. And, of course, they're not going to admit they made a mistake after already having my daughter arrested and in handcuffs. And they did not tell her that she was being charged with an Arno until at least 20 minutes after she had already been cuffed and seated in the back of the cop car. Thank you, sweetheart. Wow. We will be identifying this. Yes, you can give her, give her some support there. We will be identifying this police officer shortly. He is undoubtedly among the worst officers anywhere in this country, and he must be held accountable. Ladies and gentlemen, next time, it could be your daughter. It's just when. It's not an if, but when. Marissa was likewise mistreated and arrested falsely, as many of you have already seen the video. Most of, the, most of you guys already know that uh, police officers manipulated and lied to Marissa in order to ensure that the public could not see or film Cyrus being ripped out of Marissa's arms by belligerent tyrants who wear the badge and who both ask and expect you to back the blue. Most of you have already seen the videos. Marissa was keen enough to live stream the entire episode on social media while it happened. But what many don't recognize is that the police lied to Marissa and told her that she would not be separated from baby Cyrus. The police officer specifically said that Marissa could ride with Cyrus and that she would transport, she would be transported with Cyrus in the ambulance. But once she got in the ambulance, she was threatened and forced under duress to give up baby Cyrus, then separated from baby Cyrus, handcuffed, arrested, and taken to jail. That's the truth. And people want to say there has to be more to the story. Police officers don't just take a baby away for no reason. There has to be. There isn't any more to the story. And we can't wait to have our day in court. First, we want baby Cyrus back. But it will all be known. And everybody will then learn and realize, no, CPS does overreach. No, it's not okay to think that anything a cop does is always okay. And I call on every good police officer, if you exist out there, to denounce your contemporaries who are tyrants, who are abusing citizens, in your, you're in the same department as them, you share locker rooms with them, you share lunch with them, denounce them when they abuse others. I'm a father. Every time a father who's an authority figure abuses his child, I will get up and denounce that father. When I denounce fathers, I'm not denouncing the institution of fatherhood. I'm a down, denouncing that tyrant. I've been a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ for over 20 years. Guess what? Not all ministers are good either. And when ministers abuse their power and they act tyrannical or they do immoral and ungodly things, I stand up and denounce them. And when I denounce them, I'm not denouncing the institution of the ministry. On the contrary. But for some reason, you cop refuse to denounce any other tyrant who's a belligerent thug with a badge. You know what that tells me? It tells me you're protecting yourself because you want that same cover when you do the same thing. That wasn't in the official report. <laughs> Anyhow, once Marissa got in the ambulance, she was threatened and forced under duress to give up baby Cyrus, handcuffed, taken to jail. Yes, these officers are worse than animals. Not all of them, but these ones. And I will make that distinction, but I ask you to come out and distinguish yourself, police officers, so we know who you are who are good, and we know who the bad ones are. Hey, I denounce politicians all the time, but I had these guys come up here. Why? Because they're the good ones. Representative Nate just proved it. Representative Tammy Nichols proved it. Judy Boyle just proved it.
There's people we can trust. We can even disagree, and that's fine. But there's some who are good, and there's some who are bad. And we need to denounce those who are bad when they do wrong. Additionally, another lie is that people have claimed that baby Cyrus was suffering from, quote, severe malnourishment. This is just a lie intended to mislead the public into thinking that Cyrus's parents are somehow bad parents who are not taking care of baby Cyrus. The truth is that baby Cyrus had begun vomiting a few months or so ago and sporadically. This happened when Marissa started to introduce solid foods to him. Does that sound crazy for all you mothers out here? You introduce solid foods and baby starts vomiting. Her and Levi spent countless hours researching every possible cause, going to doctors, naturopaths, specialists, and more, and all out of great out-of-pocket expense. Does that sound like parents who don't care about their child? Cyrus would get better, and then he would relapse. This happened a few times. As part of their continued research and care for Cyrus, they decided reluctantly to take Cyrus here to St. Luke's so he can get an IV to help rehydrate him after vomiting so much, and this was at the suggestion of their pediatrician. The plan or idea was for him to be well so that they could continue to try different foods, formulas, or whatever to see what baby Cyrus could hold down and what he could not. So that is the actual truth, and it is nowhere near what has been reported that, quote, medical personnel determined that Cyrus was severely malnourished. These are all lies, and shame on you for believing them. Levi and Marissa must be in charge of Cyrus's health and medical decisions. That is their God-given right, and their right according to the Idaho State Constitution. Furthermore, Levi and Marissa are both members of Freedom Tabernacle Church, where their doctrine and creed, according to their published Articles of Faith, states in Article 4, Section 3 of the Freedom Tabernacle Articles of Faith that, quote, We recognize that parents are the ultimate source of authority over their own children. Indeed, the fifth commandment is to honor one's parents. The Bible expressly teaches that obeying this commandment is the first commandment with promise associated with it. Ephesians 6, verse 3. Don't worry about the tears. It's because heaven is crying over baby Cyrus right now. And that obeying one's parents brings longevity of life. The training and provision of one's child is one of the most basic duties and responsibilities of adult parents. Proverbs 22, 6. Proverbs 23, 13 through 14. So much so that a man is considered worse than an infidel if he does not provide for his own family and children. 1 Timothy 5, 8. Any force or government entity which would seek to usurp parental rights to take control over one's children must be resisted and denied at all levels. It is an abridgment of the religious rights and conscience of every Christian to have their parental rights taken away from them. This is still from the Articles of Faith. State government, listen close, state government and external forces have no power or authority to force or determine a child's medical needs, spiritual needs, education, surroundings, discipline, media consumption, food choices, or any such like. These rights and determinations belong to the parents. Now, whether you appreciate, deny, approve, or disagree with this section of their Articles of Faith, it is their deeply held religious faith. To deny this is to deny their constitutional right to freedom of religion and to deny and reject Idaho State Statute 18-1501, Section 4, which speaks about, quote, injury to children in the state of Idaho. This statute specifically states, and I quote, the practice of a parent or guardian who chooses for his child treatment by prayer or spiritual means alone shall not for that reason alone be construed to have violated the duty of care to such child. That's Idaho state statute. Now, Levi and Marissa have been using prayer in their faith for Cyrus since his vomiting began. Many of you who are friends know that as we've called out everybody to continue to pray for baby Cyrus. Sure, they felt it was wisdom to go above and beyond and to enlist the care of additional medical professionals. But in doing so, they never relinquished their right under God, the U.S. Constitution, and Idaho State Statute to direct the care of Cyrus based on their faith. This right is sacred and protected by Idaho State Statute. Again, 18501 Section 4. Look it up for yourself. Now, speaking of state statutes, I'd like to read some laws that were broken by CPS the Meridian Police Department, and everyone involved in baby Cyrus's kidnapping. So for those who think that cops can never do any wrong, social workers can never do any wrong, doctors can never do any wrong. Well then, 
Let me just read straight directly from Idaho State Statute. This is Title 16, Chapter 16, 16-1601. It says that each child coming within the purview of this chapter shall receive, preferably in his own home. It goes, I'm not going to read everything to you, just the highlighted portions. You can look it up. It's also on our website posted, so you can check for yourself and inform yourself. It says here that the state of Idaho shall, to the fullest extent possible, seek to preserve, protect, enhance, and reunite the family relationship. Every single second baby Cyrus is not with his mother, this state statute is being violated and the law is being broken. It says that they should preserve the privacy and unity of the family whenever possible. It certainly is possible. They are right here. He is in this building somewhere and there is no danger to the child. It is 100% possible and there's nothing preventing it from happening other than bureaucrats and tyrants. It says here, we actually have a parental rights act here in Idaho, and it's a good, it's a good act. The question is not, do we have good law? The question is, is it being followed? It says here that. These are under the unalienable rights to retain the people. Yeah, right, right. Okay, it says that the high duty and right to nurture and direct, the interests of the parents include the high duty and right to nurture and direct their children's destiny, including their upbringing and education. It says the state of Idaho has independent authority to protect its parents' fundamental right to nurture and direct their children's destiny. That right, that fundamental right to nurture and direct, there is nothing more nurturing than a mother nursing her child. The word nurture comes from the word nursing. They are denying my daughter the ability to nurture and nurse her son. It is shameful, despicable, and absolutely abhorrent. It says this very, very carefully. Note this. The protections and rights recognized are rooted in the due process of law guaranteed pursuant to Section 13, Article 1, of the Constitution of the State of Idaho. Now, let me ask you people a question. I'm reading this law right here to you. We see the U.S. Constitution here was violated. God-given rights have been violated. The Idaho State Constitution was violated. Idaho State Statute was violated. If the law doesn't matter, what type of a country do we have? Which of you are even protected? If anything can happen without consequence, if there are no consequences for the kidnapping of my grandson, baby Cyrus, then not one of you here today is safe. Not a one of you. Section 6, Title 32, Chapter 10. Here, Section 6 says, Government, governmental efforts that restrict or interfere with these fundamental rights, it says, are only permitted if that restriction or interference satisfies the strict scrutiny standard provided in Section 32, 1013, Idaho Code which it does not satisfy in baby Cyrus's case. Last but not least, it says this. Essential to further, uh, oh, oh, here's that section. That section that I just read about that it referenced says that interference with fundamental uh, parental rights are restricted. Neither the state of Idaho or any political subdivision thereof may violate a parent's fundamental and established rights protected by this act, and any restriction of or interference with such rights shall not be upheld unless it demonstrates by clear and convincing evidence that the restriction or interference is both two things, A and B. A, essential to further a compelling governmental interest. And B, the least restrictive means available for the furthering of that compelling governmental interest. So unless they can demonstrate that ripping baby Cyrus away from his mom has some type of compelling governmental interest and that it was done in the least restrictive means available, they're again breaking Idaho state statute. This is how easy it is to reunite the parents. You open up that stupid door and you let my family in so that my daughter can nurse her son. 
It is just that simple. The entire act of ripping baby Cyrus away from his parents is an act of tyranny and a violation of these rights and laws by all agents who were involved. But including and specifically the police officers, Meridian Detective Hansen, badge number 3534, Meridian Detective Fuller, badge 3138, social worker, either, it's, I believe it's nice, it might be Nise Lufua, and Aaron Dixtra of Functional Medicine of Idaho. We will share the names of the police officers involved in this heinous crime later as we parse through all the footage. But we're asking our legislators to stand up for parental rights and religious rights and liberties. And further resolve in this legislative session, don't pawn this off for another day, to alter the language of our laws and codes to ensure that under no circumstances can CPS, social workers, or tyrannical police officers kidnap children from the hands of innocent parents ever again. Could you guys come up here? I appreciate everybody being here. The family appreciates everybody being here. We are going to close out this press conference, but before we do, we are asking humbly before you guys, if everybody, those who are close can come close. We believe in the laying on of hands and a prayer. And if you guys could come close and if you would just pray, this is his necklace and his binky. And if you guys can close, and where's my wife? Babe, if you come here and stand close. We're just asking you guys to pray with us. Pray a hedge of protection around Marissa, around Levi, around baby Cyrus. And I ask for mercy upon all those who are involved in this process and that God's will would be done. If you would all pray here with us, we'll pray. And I won't pray in the microphone. And this will be everybody praying. So we're asking you to pray as well. And I'll put the microphone down. Let's pray. All the people said amen. 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 Thank you, everybody, from the bottom of our hearts for being here today. We do want to just leave an announcement, let everybody know that people are going to be protesting here at the hospital every day from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. until baby Cyrus is reunited with his family. We're not asking you to be here all day from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. We're just asking you to do what you can. And we more than you know it. We appreciate everybody's support. Thank you so much.
Well, close enough. Yeah. That's awesome. Congrats. Hi, Steve. How are you? Hi. Hey, this is my friend Tammy I was telling you about. 